Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial. If you're looking for the best photo editing software for your Leica camera, Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro 10, personally to me, is one of the best, if not the best. And today in this video, I'm going to prove it to you. So this video is about demonstrating how well Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro controls and look after the DNG from Leica camera. And also in another part, I'm going to do a little bit black and white and color. So we're going to do a black and white editing first. And then I'm going to do a little bit of color editing to show you the quality side by side, the output result of Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro 10 for Leica camera. Now, important to mention because at the end of the day, we are talking about the glorious Leica. Absolutely beautiful history and wonderful color. So generally, if you expose it right and focus right, out of the box, it gives you the best result. So generally speaking, you don't necessarily have to do any kind of editing, too much editing, in my opinion. You need a little bit of tonal contrast and change it a little bit, but nothing aggressive. And I've done exten extensive test with Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro to edit Leica DNG files from different brands. I think I've got four here and one of them from Leica LS2, SL2, and a couple of them from Leica M9 and M10, I believe. So yeah, I was very, 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 very pleased about it. And I'm going to do only two photos here. So starting with I'm going to do this one first, this flower. Now, typically in Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro, I start with the lens correction. But good news is that the lens profile is already integrated inside the file. So I don't need to do any kind of lens correction in Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro for this Leica file. Now, moving up, I have noise reduction and demosaic sharpening and uh, on the left, I have normal sharpening. So I usually leave them for the end. Before that, I check usually, am I happy with my white balance of this photo? Now, if I click the white balance, it says it's at 5,045. A little cooler, I prefer my photo at slightly warmer, not aggressive though, very, very slightly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test my to auto mode because this is the absolute which is glorious look at this beautiful and warm tone i love it i'm just gonna zoom in and look at this sharpness my goodness god bless leica and i'm just going to test the auto natural which is also not far from the absolute and i'm going to actually keep it there now i'm going to take a quick look to the exit file so exit file this is a leica sl2 file and then we have the lens. So lens is at 75 mm manually focus at f1.2. That is some serious bokeh there. So I'm going to close it. So now he said that I'm going to do black and white and color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do color first because I started with the white balance and all that. And then I'm going to check with the color profile. So I'm going to close the white balance first and then in the profile, usually I leave it to natural because the faithful, it gives a little bit way too flat color. It's important if you're looking for your specific look, but I love the natural one. And then I move on to memory color or memory color two, one or two. Portrait obviously there for the portrait and film color, they're different. They give you that kind of specific look. And I am trying to fix between film color v2 or memory color one because they both are saturated which i love but memory color one has a bit more brightness than film color v2 so i'm going to give it to memory color one look at that it looks nice and beautiful and then what i'm going to do because i'm done with the color looking at the histogram it has a little bit clipping. I'm going to check with my highlight warning first. Yep, it has a little bit of um, highlight clipping on these white edges. So I'm going to go to the HDR at the left bottom, sorry, right bottom, and then go to the color burn HDR 
and then move the slide up until if I see it's not clipping anymore and looks much, 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 much better. There you go. I'm going to stop right there. And then, yes, I do have a little bit clipping still. So I'm going to go to the color out, out of color gamut warning. And then see that it's a little bit yellow, which means the red is a little bit oversaturated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my cursor on the red, move that on the next to the flower and check this one out. So yeah, it looks like a little bit oversaturated. So I'm going to reduce the saturated about until the yellow goes away. Now it looks much better. I worry less about that green part, which doesn't really bother me at all. Cropping, it depends. It really up to you. So I'm not going to crop it much. And all in all, I'm already happy with the look. I, would, I wouldn't mind a little bit gamma. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the curve on the left bottom, change it to L, and let's see what it gives me. So it gives me a really good punchy brightness. And then move down the shadow to give a little bit of contrast. And then move the saturation up just a notch, not too much, because the yellow is going to come out, which I don't like. And then I'm going to go to the red channel, move the highlight of the red a little bit up, move down the shadow of the red channel, just a notch, not too much. I'll go to the green channel, move down. Let's see what it gives me. It's too red to me. So I'm going to move up a little bit. So I'm trying to give a little bit of film look. And then I'm going to move the same thing, move up downward so shadow gets a little bit red and then i'm going to go to the blue and then create a nice a soft s curve look at that how wonderful is it so let's turn on all the sharpness so d mosaic sharpening and then all the noise reduction and sharpening to default right i'm not going to do anything crazy here and let's export it. I'm curious about the result now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save it to the exact same location. JPEG is fine, to be honest. And unsharp marks to web, obviously, because it's for web and see in develop. It's going to take some time. Don't worry. What I'm going to do, I'm going to meanwhile, go to my folder where it's going to ex export. I think it's in my K. There you go. And then let's see if it's coming up. It should be coming up very soon. And that's our original raw file. And next one, this one, I'm going to close the exit file, is our output. In fact, how beautiful is it, by the way? So I'm going to close this one, close that one too. I'm going to check side by side. So this is our side by side and try to make it full screen. But before I do that, I'm going to reset the photo, original photo, so that you should be able to see it side by side. Default, there you go. And full screen. How crazy is it? The color is so nice and soft. The original photo is already fantastic, by the way, right? But look at this. Just soft beautiful glorious i mean if i look at the left and if i look at the right i cannot say one got better than the other they just look different you can actually decide to keep the original photo as you prefer or you can just change it to your taste it doesn't really matter my point is that when it comes to the software the silky Pix developer studio pro it managed to look after this beautiful lake of photo with care and with love. And I'm a big fan of it because the bokeh is still nice and soft. Nothing too crazy sharpening. If I zoom in, about 100% to the flower. Check this one out. No kind of weird, um, what do you call it? The little thing, the artifacts happen when Lightroom edits Fuji file. Nothing, nothing, none of that. Nothing is going on. I'm sorry, I'm kind of uh, losing my word because I'm looking at this flower in full screen in front of my computer and, you know, um, um, my mind is blown. That's it. Right. Now, 
I'm going to turn off this full screen mode. Now we're going to do what you call the black and white. So I'm going to do black and white in Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro. My question is, am I going to use the exact same photo? Probably. I'm going to take a look at the other one. This one is a good candidate of a black and white. The reason why I say the good candidate is because, to be honest, you know, color is not the priority. It's all about the shape in this particular image. And good news in Silky Pix, you have many, many, many way to edit uh, black and white and a good quality for that matter in Silky Pix. First of all, you have this preset here given by the software company. So I'm going to go side by side. So that's cold, a cold hard tone. This is warm. Look at that. Beautiful. You can just keep it as it is and move on with your life. Seriously, I would, I would do the same because their um, presets are already freaking amazing. But if you decide to make your own, you can go to the profile and change to monochrome immediately. And that should give you a solid, solid quality of black and white. There is another way to do that. You can go back to the original neutral and you have a box tool. It calls monochrome controller, this one. If you turn this on, on, what happens, it turns everything to black and white. And then you change the filter, just like the old school filter. So I would change it to yellow first. And then because the sky is too bright, I want the statue to stand out. I would turn down the sky, the blue channel and the magenta, cyan, my apologies, as much as I can. So now you have a really dark background and really strong foreground, correct? And let's see, I play with the red and see what that gives me. And the orange, fantastic. Once I'm done, I would go to the curb, change it to L for luminosity and do a very old and classic S curve, just a touch, just to give a little bit of contrast, not too much though. And once it's done, I would uh, crop out just a little bit, not too much though, again, and done. Maybe I would add a little bit gamma, a little bit curve, the black, my apologies, and it's already looking good. What I would do, I would change the noise reduction to default, and then the mosaic sharpening, to his default as well. And immediately I would export it just to check immediately how it looks like. I cannot wait. So that's our original. Give me a second, beam. And this is our beautiful Leica black and white. I'm just gonna zoom in as much as I can. There you go. So let's zoom about 100%. Even at 100%, the details, for the love of Leica, check this one out. I don't know what you think, but I'm speechless. I'm mind blown. Anyway, so yeah, personally, Silky Peaks to me is one of the best software if you want to edit your beautiful Leica RAW files. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If so, please like and subscribe. And I see you with the more videos. Bye bye.